Hey everyone, it's been a while since we've delved into the crazy world of Ali Dawa, and nothing triggers this guy like an ex-Muslim, particularly if that ex-Muslim is a woman. Now, he's responding to a video from Jubilee, it's a big YouTube channel which does discussions on politics and relationships and stuff like that. In this particular episode, I had some Muslims and ex-Muslims talking, and it's really wound Ali Dawa up, so let's take a look. We are going to be reacting to the Jubilee. I've been meaning to react to this, but alhamdulillah, today we're going to be doing that. And it really, really triggered me. And it's very funnily enough, they're bringing back these ex-Muslims, these absolute waste of spaces. They're trying to trigger you. That's why they brought those people. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, like, they're just so, this is boring now. We've gone past it. That was like 10 years ago. Your hype is gone. You're finished. No one gives a damn. Yeah, please. Anyways, let's watch this. So this woman here really triggered me. Yeah. So that's a great start, isn't it? I mean, he's so dismissive of ex-Muslims. Oh yeah, that's gone. That's past. That's 10 years ago. No one cares about it. Number one. There's more ex-Muslims now than there ever has been, and they're continuing to grow. So they're going nowhere, Ali. Secondly, you saying that you don't care and immediately saying that this woman has triggered you shows that you very much do care. Um, are you ready? I'm ready yeah. to get triggered. Let's see. Here is the question. I think brainwash is a strong word, but I also obviously step forward. I was raised Muslim. Mm. I'm Iranian. My mom's side of the family, especially a lot of Iranians, they felt like they just had to become Muslim to obviously like adhere. And it's extreme what they're doing in Iran. Obviously, I'm not comparing. But I guess with brainwash, I also went to an Islamic school. So my really devout Muslim friends, it feels like brainwash. I have a friend who's hijabi, and I, I just like it, for her, it feels like it wasn't a choice kind of vibe. It's just something you should do because of your family and because of the religion. But then she's also super devout Muslim. It's just a hairy topic. We're going to go to a couple of videos where she talks. Yeah. Uh, but in a nutshell here, I find it so ironic. I find it so bizarre that the Western woman, when I first watched this, obviously I saw a glimpse of her. And in that glimpse, I uh, realized uh, that she's wearing a mini skirt. She's got her chest out. And I'm like, wow, the audacity. Yeah. Oh, my God. Why don't you stone her to death? What a terrible crime. I mean, the fact that you think you are not brainwashed hmm. and for you to think that basically her idea is what? This is freedom. You're oppressed. Yeah. And I well, it's not what she's saying. I mean, the point is, is that she's got the freedom to wear that if she wants to. And it's not like she's got the freedom to wear that everywhere anyway. I mean, I doubt her um, in a work situation or something like that. She's obviously going to be dressed more professional. But yeah, she's got the freedom to dress down if she wants to freedom to dress herself up she doesn't feel restricted by the islamic rules so yes in that sense i don't see how she's brainwashed i'm thinking and i've had this discussion with many people before the western woman you are so damn deluded that in the nightclubs that i used to go in jahiliya mm. you would be called a hoe and guess what you would be dancing to it and repeating and saying i'm a hoe i mean if that is not brainwashing mm. to a level where you are accused of being somebody who is promiscuous and sleeps around and you can proudly come and say i am yeah dancing in the club yeah i am a hoe i'm a bad b-i-t-c-h and you are dressed up in a way where you are hypersexualized. You are nothing but a sexual object. And you have the audacity to tell a Muslim woman that she is brainwashed. Just I mean, it, you think just because a woman goes to a nightclub, she's going to be dancing, calling herself a hoe and stuff like that. No, you just might have gone to a really scabby nightclubs in the past. And uh, the fact that some men like you look at women and objectify them like that, that doesn't mean that the rest of us do. So that's on you blows my mind bro a lot of her statements was somebody went to a madrasa i feel they're brainwashed what a dead statement just because you feel they're brainwashed doesn't make them brainwashed and you've just said that exact thing to her though <laughs> you've just said because you feel she's brainwashed she's brainwashed what a hypocrite and she undercut everything when she said yeah i think it's a bit of a strong term but i step forward if you think it's a strong term don't step forward you know what i mean She's making the claim that, yes, if you're forced to wear something because of some religious edicts, then you're brainwashed because you're not doing it for any other reason. She may choose to wear what she wants to wear for different reasons, but at least she's got the choice to do that. There's nothing pressuring her to dress down or dress up. That's up to her. So, uh, and the other thing is, like, like you said, being influenced. I, when you go to a certain school, look, you're always going to be influenced. You're always going to be, it's a synonym, isn't it, of, of brainwashing. Either you no, it's not. A <laughs> How is that a synonym of brainwashing? To be influenced doesn't mean that you're brainwashed. As long as you're able to take in different information from different, different sources and make a, a, a reasonable judgment on the information you've given, that's not brainwashing. You could be influenced by positive things and negative things, but no, it's not a synonymous with brainwashing. You're brainwashed by the secular liberals or you're going to be brainwashed by uh, knowledge that comes from the creator. I don't 
oh, well, at least you admit that you are brainwashed. She was raised a Muslim, so she obviously thought about it with her own mind. She was given a couple of different options about whether either she should definitely be forced to dress one way or if she can choose to dress how she wants. She chose the latter and you're bitter about it. I don't know about you, but I don't want some guys in suits who just care about making more profit and money and indivi and are focused about individualism and are godless. I don't want these people, frankly, giving me ideals and giving me lessons of morality, frankly. Yeah, what a shock that is. I wonder why, because you've already been given your morality by a source that doesn't even exist, by the Allah that you believe exists, which you've got no evidence for. So the fact that you think somebody else is brainwashed because they've actually thought about it, it's just laughable. I think too, like just thinking about the Quran and my upbringing, like I had every day, the two biggest ones that come out, stand out to me, would be like the issue of the hijab, which I know a lot of people will counter. So the Quran says women have to cover the khaymar to cover up so that they don't tempt um, the men. And then the, I will say the Quran does technically say men's hijab is their gaze, the male gaze. And I just, that just seems a little silly to me beyond that, like in the Quran, how men can have up to four wives, but women can't. It's like, I, or I, in the Islamic school, I want to say the, the azan, the call to prayer. All the boys in my class, they're like, we're going to do the call to prayer for fr this Friday. Um, I'm ineligible because I'm a woman, apparently. Can't do the azan, I can't do the call to prayer. So just those, are, I would say, are my Quran-specific examples. And they're like, well, this is to protect women. I don't see that at all. I mean, I mean, the brothers did an amazing job. May Allah bless them, uh. really. Yeah? How pathetic can you be, you know? Yeah, so for example, she said, for example, nowhere in the Quran does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that women should cover up because men can't control themselves. And number two, nowhere does it say man's hijab is only the lowering their gaze. That's not the clear because Allah tells the believing men and the believing women to lower their gaze. Mm. And of course, for a man... We didn't say it was only that. She just said that was men's hijab. And it's obviously, well, that's for visual creatures. Um, so that's, that's that. And then she talks about polygamy for that. I mean, you've just contradicted yourself there. You're saying, oh, it's for men and for women um, to lower their gaze. And then you say, oh, yeah, but obviously men are visual creatures. That's why it says it's for men. So which is it? I mean, that's, the, <laughs> I mean, you're essentially agreeing with her matter there's many reasons why polygamy men are, every man is polygamous by nature yes and you think you know do you think the western man is not you think the western man doesn't go around and have side trick missions and girlfriends and sleep around you know even in i heard in, in france well again that's a massive generalization i mean this is it's so funny and she wasn't even making that claim in the video she's just saying that you know the it's unfair that men can have up to four wives and she does mention the fact this can also be infinite sex slaves while uh, women are stuck with you know let's be fair someone like you and that seems extremely unfair. Now, that's not saying anything about whether people cheat or not in Western countries or any non-Muslim countries. Yes, uh, of course, that goes on. But that's not the standard. There are many monogamous marriages. And the point is, is like you talk about side chicks, you always do this thing. You acknowledge that basically you are one of these cheating polygamous. You, you, you describe women as, as basically being toilets to relieve um, yourself in. You've got these disgusting attitudes towards women. And then you say the West has disgusting attitudes. Well, most people in the West are just in ordinary relationships. You're the one who proudly goes on about this way that essentially Islam has institutionalized cheating by allowing you to have four wives and infinite sex slaves. That's not dealing with, you know, making it more moral. That's just um, institutionalizing it. And I think a woman is completely reasonable to point that hypocrisy out. It's, it's in their culture to have a mistress, you know, and uh, the, and she's talking about the adhan. Oh, I couldn't do the adhan. I can, well, I can turn around and say, you know what? Why why, why am I obligated to pray, Um, you know, highly obligated to pray in the mosque, but my wife isn't and she gets the same reward? Why do I need to go to Jum Oh, yeah, that's the same, isn't it? Oh, you've got to pray in a mosque. So, you know, she's so lucky. Yet you're, you know, proudly going on about how you're going to bang four different women. Um, and she might be a little bit annoyed that you're sleeping around for these other wives and sex slaves. But yeah, 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 I've got to pray in the mosque, though. So, you know, it all evens out. What a fucking joke. Oh, but she doesn't. Why am I the protector and provider, but she's not? I mean, what's up? Oh, yeah, protector and provider. I mean, you always do this. He, like, he's acting as if he's in a war zone. What have you got to protect her against? You're living in one of the safest countries in the whole world. You don't have to do any protecting. Pathetic. Yeah, the thing is that, look, when, when you acknowledge that there is a creator, yeah, the, the argument has to stem with, do you believe that there is a God or do you believe that there is no God? Yeah. If you don't believe that there is a God, naturally your morality is coming from something else. So exactly. who are you to judge someone else's morality? Exactly. So, well, Of course you can judge someone else's morality. I mean, this is exactly what you're doing. Just because you've imagined that Allah exists and then has handed down some morality, which is just, you know, 
unquestionable. That's your delusion. We can still challenge it. And the point is, is the morality that you've been handed down and certainly the way that Salafis like you interpret it makes it highly immoral to pretty much every non-Muslim. So that's a you problem. That's not a her problem. She's entitled to make a judgment. Whether she's right or not is for each individual to decide. But you're just relying on divine command theory. I believe I was told by Allah, so I win. That's not how it works. So if Allah created us, which we believe that he did. He yeah, so what? Yeah, you believe that. We don't. So therefore, it's a moot point. His law is all encompassing. So for you, not for us. If he, in his divine wisdom, knowing us, knowing everything, he says that, okay, men are doing this, women are doing that. I'm sorry, it's not even if I, uh, no, it's not up for, you know, discussion. You know what I mean? It's not something that, okay, we accept God is all knowing. He knows everything. He sees everything. And he's, you know, created all of this. And we're going to decide what right is, what wrong is. And we're going to decide what's in his book, what's not in his book, and what's right, what's wrong. How presumptuous of you. How arrogant. Arrogant of how presumptuous, how arrogant of you to just make these claims without any good evidence and expect everyone else to follow. I mean, you're just, again, relying on divine command theory. You've got a book you think the creator of the universe uh, tells you is the right thing to follow. Therefore, you and everybody else should do it. Well, sorry, it doesn't work that way. And a, po a point on that is if you had any um, faith that your morality was actually reasonable or fair, you wouldn't be saying things like, oh, well, you shouldn't challenge it because, you know, it came from God, so it doesn't matter what he said. If you actually thought this was reasonable, that you could justify it without appealing to God, you would do so. But you can't because you know inherently it's unfair. This is why so many women leave Islam, because there's so much riding against them for no justifiable reason in that book. And you can't make a good case for it. Therefore, you just got to go say, Allah knows best. That's why the avalanche of apostasy continues. You. And if you look at yourself, you look at look at the way you're dressed. You can dress however you like. But I'm saying you're in yeah, yeah, not in your world though. And this is the point. This is why you're so triggered by it. This is why you're so pissed off because she's actually using the freedom that you resent that you would take away if you had the power. And thank goodness you don't. And it's good. Your cleavage is showing, and you're telling me that you chose to. Really? Did you really wake up and all these women that are affected by the hypersexualized society and the beauty industry and the Botox industry and the, there's these surgeries that they're going under that some of them even lose their life. They, they become martyrs. Yes, one woman in Brazil died because she got butt implants. She became a oh, one woman. <laughs> one woman in Brazil, which is not exactly considered like part of the first world West, is it? One woman in Brazil gets, um, you know, has some bad reaction to a surgery. Surgery. That's your evidence that like. Oh, the West is out of control with the beauty industry and like everybody's getting nose jobs and butt jobs or whatever. Yeah, that brilliant anecdotal evidence there. What a dummy. A at, the, at the course and my favorite book beauty sick i recommend you to uh, buy it as well. That's mad. But very simple. Being I know. A uh, yeah. For Literally, bro, that's implant. but that's yeah, it is mad that you would make such a stupid claim. That's what it is. When it comes to God's commandments, it's a who you are. No, you can't tell me what to do. But you are the same person that follows this liberal secular world yeah. view to a point where you don't even question it. You telling me when you wake up and how do you know whether she questions it or not? Again, you're acting like wow. You know, she got a little bit of cleavage showing in this particular video. So like. That's how she walks around all day. Or, you know, she just got brainwashed by the liberal secular society. I mean, the liberal secular society is <laughs> extremely complicated, as the Muslim world is. You have variation. You get people who dress very conservatively all the time. You get a small number of people who are nudists. You get people who will just dress down for the beach or, the, or for the swimming pool and otherwise won't expose themselves at all. So, I mean, you're acting as if this woman in this one video in this one instance, represents what the entire West is. What a fucking straw man argument. I had to do makeup. You can't live without makeup. The fact that you had to wear a miniskirt, the question is, why do you find the need to show your legs? I'm just curious. Now you can she chose to. Maybe she doesn't find the need to. She just happened to want to wear it that day. Why do you care so much? You can do whatever you like. I'm just curious. Why do you find the need to show your breasts? I'm very curious. What triggers you to be like, I would like to present myself in this manner? You think? Yeah, well, I mean, if you really believe that, why didn't you ask that question to Mohammed Hijab when he done his strip tease routine in the fucking street? He decided to show his breast, didn't he? I mean, did you ever criticize him for that? Think you choose? No, you don't. Unless it's in the Quran. Have you seen the one who has one master compared to three masters or multiple masters? Mm. The one who has one master, which you talked about, is God. We we follow his regulation. You have multiple masters. Mm. Your friends, opposite gender, the beauty industry. Yeah, these things are not masters. They're just part of the culture that may influence you. But ultimately, no one is forcing her 
to wear a mini skirt. If she wants to do that, she can. The fact that you're so butt hurt that she's got the freedom, and more importantly, because she's an ex Muslim, I mean, that really gets in your fucking craw, doesn't it? Um, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to be pissing your pants over it. <laughs> you call her pathetic. So many other factors that the society societal pressures that is telling you how to look, how to be, what. How would that be any different from the societal pressures in a Muslim society run by clowns like you telling her to cover up? I mean, the point is, she can actually choose, whereas in somewhere like Iran, where she said her parents were from, they don't get to choose. Or if they choose to, you know, take the hijab off, they got a very real risk of being arrested and beaten or even killed, as we've seen in the last few years. And that's the difference. So you want to talk about... Oh, you're being influenced. Yeah, well, she's still got the choice, isn't she? To eat, what size waist you should be, what size your thighs should be, how big your feet should be, how big your nose should be. To the level that if I was to come here and question your looks, if I come and say to you, for example, you know, your nose, yeah, it's, it looks it looks a bit big. That comment in itself, I bet she's watching this and be like, you know what? This is my nose. Yeah. I'm just saying. No, but you she's going to be questioning Exactly. Ex yeah, I doubt she would really care what an absolute moron like you thinks about her. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's true. Some people can be um, influenced by those kind of comments. So what? I mean, that's just the fact that people can get upset by being, you know, those, those kind of personal insults or whatever. That's got nothing to do with the freedom to <laughs> wear a miniskirt or not cover yourself in a flipping niqab or whatever. Complete straw man again. Exactly, does it? And even me, the fact that I'm mentioning this, the fact that you're insecure, this is what the Western system has done to you, make you feel so ugly. Now you're going to be thinking, mm, maybe I should get a nose surgery. You are a slave and a byproduct of your society. All we're saying to you is our sister that come and worship the true God because he knows what's best for you. And it's as simple as that. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the true problem, isn't it? You're bitter. She left Islam. You want to come back because as I say, you're scared of this avalanche of apostasy. There ain't nothing you can do about it. You know, when you say, oh, I'm picking my clothing. Before, there used to be three seasons uh, in fashion. Yes. Now there's something that's come out. It's called yes. fast fashion. Yes. And there's only like three or four shops. And it's a new fashion season every week, frankly. And one thing that I don't get, whenever these people talk about freedom, why is it always removing clothes? Why does no woman ever go, you yeah. know what? It's a freedom. Mm -hmm. Well, again, that's a straw, man. It's <laughs> different people dress in different ways in the West. That's the whole point. It's not about removing clothes for, for many people. It's about just having the choice about what you want to wear in what particular situation. So it's just another idiotic statement. It's the kind of society that you want and a fundamentalist Islamic caliphate where you won't have the choice. That's the point. My body, my choice. I'm going to put on more clothes, yes, mate. Exactly. I'm gonna... Well, she's got that choice. If she wants to put on more clothes cover my hair mike exactly exactly why that why is that not the case everywhere you go why it is the case if somebody wants to dress like that they can why isn't that these women choose freedom by covering up why and, and, and them... why is it in these countries that they always like uh, france a, a secular liberal country why is it that they're banning putting on clothes rather than taking off clothes it... yeah because they're not doing that are they they're banning particular religious clothing and they're doing it and not just to muslims have done it for um it's not just clothing, it's it's overt religious symbols in certain um, uh, public areas and um, certain like municipal buildings and schools and things like that. That's what they ban. Now, you can agree with that or disagree with it. They're not doing it because people are covering up. It's in some respect, it is a response to the deliberate um, political Islam charge provocation of Muslims like you encouraging women to say, yeah, 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 go in there, dress like, show your, rub your Islamism in their face kind of thing. It's a reaction to that kind of divisive crap. Now, as I say, you can agree or disagree with that, but they are not telling uh, women that they have to uncover. You just can't be wearing this kind of religious um, symbolic clothing. Exactly. This is because, not a choice, because, no, no, it's a choice. It's a state's choice. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, just a <laughs> video full of bitterness and resentment because, you know, it's an ex-Muslim and worst of all, ex-Muslim woman who dares to say, yeah, I don't want to live, um, you know, by these ridiculous 7th century rules. And these guys, you know, smile to Jana and Ali Dar, but they've got nothing rational to say. Um, well, actually, there was one thing that Ali Dawa said in the video, which I have to say I kind of agree with. So I'll leave you with his last words. I'm a hoe. I'm a hoe. I'm a hoe.